the entire time it's just people being like yeah i don't really give a shit that donald trump was shot and he sucks <laughs> like yeah i don't really care yeah he sucked Fuck him I think we watched this video already. This is an old video re-uploaded. This, on the other hand, might be new. You said it was kind of funny? Yeah, I mean... Oh, yeah, it is. Dem say attack on Trump because she's pregnant. Dem say attack on Trump was funny or fake? It was just kind of like, I don't know. I mean, I guess it wasn't like funny, but it was like... Dude, this is awesome because, again, another self own. Another cell phone. It's like, oh, wow, look at all these people who hate the pre who hate the former president. Like, what? what are you doing? Okay, yeah, I mean, we know. Yeah, people despise Donald Trump so much that he almost got killed and everyone's like laughing about it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was kind of funny, let's be honest. It didn't really bother you that no, much? It doesn't really bother me. I wasn't the one who got shot, so... If you could say anything to President Trump, what would you say? Think before you speak. Our presidents, former presidents, they are too protected to let hmm. anything like that slip up right. for something to have happened. So do you think this was fake as in like Trump orchestrated this thing for his own, well, yeah, being in the so. you think that trump did this to himself yeah he probably set that up okay and why would he do that <laughs> oh the campaign and that's so funny he got the greatest shooter of all time to shoot him right in the ear as he was like moving his head but yeah all this shows is that like people hate him so much that they're like yeah it's probably fake <laughs> he's filming publicity and all that if he moved like an inch he his brain would be everywhere right. you think he would risk that i mean we live in America, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you think so? Uh, yeah, possibly. Did you guys hear about what happened on sun or Saturday to President Trump? Yes. 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 All over the news. Okay. Yeah. What was your initial reaction? I mean, I was at work. I was just at work minding my business, making my boba tea. And I didn't know about it until my boyfriend picked me up. And I was like, oh, okay. It didn't um someone said why does everything have to be a conspiracy all the time why can't some things just be no you can't have that you cannot have that chatter it has to be a grand narrative always it doesn't really bother you that no, much it doesn't really bother me uh -huh. so why didn't it bother you that much i don't know i'm not into politics uh -huh. not really into like uh -huh. <laughs> i almost called wait i didn't i forgot his name Biden? No, Trump. Oh, Trump was the one who got shot, not Biden. Yeah, so shot in the air, remember? Yay. Oh my gosh, you forgot Trump's name. Oh God, I love America. We are we are not gonna make it out. <laughs> we are so lost, dude. <laughs> it's not really like into the break. politics, and I mean, like, it doesn't. I wasn't the one who got shot, so. Are you usually that like nonchalant, carefree when anyone gets shot? Not really, because if it was like my mom or my boyfriend, I'd be like, yeah, like y'all been not who who was it? Like I, you know, I would go, I would fight for them, but but President Trump is like, eh. Mm -hmm. He's not our president now. He's a former president. So yeah, yeah. Would you feel differently if it were Biden who got shot at? No, I still probably wouldn't care. <laughs> not my family. Not my man. Don't care. What was your initial reaction to what happened to President Trump? Um, it was I was really shocked, yeah. like that that would like happen. I thought. I don't know. It was just crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's like, how did they allow this to happen? Right. Yeah. How yeah. do you think they allowed this to happen? Like, what? What the? Who messed up here? Um. Um. I don't know. Probably just like not being very controlling over guns and just like yeah. Oh, you think it was like gun control issues that let this happen? Yeah. Since I am officially back in the game, I'm going to need your support to keep these videos coming. If you like what you see and want to support me and pay for my babysitters, because I used to just need security, now I need babysitters along with security, you go to patreon.com slash Caitlin Bennett and sign up to support my work. You'll be entered into a Facebook group where you can chat with me one-on-one. -on -one. Why would anybody want to do that? Like, who the f*** would want to do that, actually? And and how it was pro you there. What was your initial reaction to finding out what happened and how it was processed? It was a distraction. It was a distraction? Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Okay. Yeah. From Go more, more into that. Yeah. Like, I think it was just something to take us off that focus or put us on that so that we could not see what's going on behind the scenes. What, whatever switch. that is. A bait and switch. Whatever that is. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but yeah, okay. that's one of my 
my ideas. <laughs> so who do you think was put up to the, you know, wanting the distraction to be done? Do you think this was like a higher type of thing? I think it might be just the media. I'm not going to say it was either one of the candidates. For, oh, okay. I think it might be the media just trying to take our mind off of what we need to be focused on. And that, that is, um, who are we going to put um, to run this country? And Honestly, and truly, because... These are being snuck in. Exactly. Yes. And I feel That's right. Jake Tapper <laughs> attempted to assassinate Donald Trump. God, I love America so much. Like, um, because our presidents, former presidents, they are too protected to let anything like that slip up right. for something to have happened. I just feel like it's the media is behind taking our focus off of what we need to focus on, and that is the issue at hand for our country. Yeah. Did you guys hear about what happened to President Trump on Saturday? Yes. Yes. What was your initial reaction? Um, I thought it was fake. Yeah, fake news for sure. Same. Yeah, you thought you thought it was fake. Yeah, yeah I think it's fake. Um, you still think it's fake? Yeah. Okay, I've never heard someone with that opinion. Just break that down like thirty seconds for me. Uh, I just don't believe that the Secret Service and all that will let somebody even get in the vicinity to yeah. do something like that. Yeah, so, that's weird. Yeah, Isn't I don't it? believe it. Anything to add to that? No. I mean, it's because we have this idea that like. Law enforcement is like super competent from television. And even I would have, I mean, even I was shocked at how bad the, the Secret Service was in this situation because they're not like regular law enforcement, you know what I mean? Pretty wild how badly they fucked up. Uh, not really. No, not yeah. really. So do you think this was fake as in like Trump orchestrated this thing for his own well being yeah, in the. So. You think that Trump did this to himself? Yeah, he probably set that up. Okay. And why would he do that? All the campaign and, you feel me, publicity and all that. He probably huh. just did that to, you feel me, put some more shine on him or something. I don't know. Okay. They weird. <laughs> okay. So you think... This is cringe. Her interviewing normies just trying to enjoy their summer and time at the beach. Ain't nobody give a shit about this. You know, that's the reason why I think it's funny. She's, like, trying to own people with this kind of content, right? And being like, look at how Democrats are so conspiratorial. Which, by the way, we don't even know if they're, like, Democrats or not. But that's the way she's trying to present it. They're black equals Democrat, right? But the entire time, the entire time, it's just people being like, yeah, I don't really give a shit that Donald Trump was shot. He sucks. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't really care. Yeah, he sucked. Fuck him. <laughs> they just don't care. Is he also like putting, trying to put himself in jail with these trials and stuff? Mm. She asking you the question, bro. <laughs> Passing it to you. <laughs> um, nah, I don't think he's doing it to himself. Um, but things happen. Do you disagree with him? Uh, no, nah, not necessarily. Okay. Um, anything can happen. So. You think someone would risk their life to win a campaign and get shot live in the head on national TV? Because it was lit. If you move. This is really hard to watch. Why? Like, 10,000 people left, I think, since I started watching this video. They're, like, so upset. Who cares? As silly as f She's incredibly cringe. These guys literally could not be bothered. Just think about the underlying sentiment there, okay? Think about the underlying sentiment. She's trying to craft the narrative here. That's one thing. But ultimately, absolutely zero people give a f Hasanabi is so annoying. Absolutely nobody gives a f about Donald Trump being shot. And the ones that do care about it are literally the ones that are like, yeah, it was probably self-imposed, self-inflicted. Moved like an inch, he, his brain would be everywhere. Right. You think he would risk that? I mean, we live in America, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you think so? Uh, yeah, possibly. Okay. Yeah. All right, any other... Yeah, also, hardline news frogs, literally, when I deviate a little bit in tone from news, will just be like, I'm gonna go, I put a toaster next to my bathtub, it's, it's over. I'm like, we're not doing hardcore news coverage, Steve Kornacki is not on screen, I'm gonna go end it all. Other explanation that could, it could be, or you're like, nah, this is Trump did this? Until I hear otherwise, no. Did you guys hear about what happened Saturday to President Trump? Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes, okay, what was your initial reaction? I don't know. I actually couldn't believe it. Like, yeah, it I couldn't. Kind of funny. I was just, like, surprised. I was just I like, know. what the, like, that's just, like, crazy. Yeah, you said it was kind of funny? Yeah, I mean, it was just <laughs> kind of like, I don't know. I mean, I guess it wasn't, like, funny, but 
It was like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was kind of funny, let's be honest. <laughs> I was just yeah. like, what like, the hell? And yeah. you knew that like this was going to be merch. Like, yeah, like every, it is everywhere. Already, there's already there's t-shirts. There's already everywhere. t-shirts about it of him like doing the thing with the there's, bleeding. There's like blood all over his oh, face. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they like, yeah. yeah, they miss. Yeah, they miss. How did they miss? And, yeah. How did they miss? I don't know. If this like, like oh. it was right here. That was so close. Any different sentiments I out here? My reaction's more like, how do you miss the shot? Yeah. Like, how did he miss it? You know. She's so excited. She's like, yeah, I got him. Not realizing that there are millions of people who share this sentiment. Like, I mean, millions. Okay. It's like, oh my God, they want, they want the former Republican president to be dead. And it's like, yeah, they do. They do. Like they won't take matters into their own hands or anything like that. They're not Republicans after all. Ironic because the shooter was a Republican. <laughs> But having said that, yeah, they're like, yeah, he sucks. Wishing death on anyone is crazy. I feel like people chilling on the beach are probably not the best target for these questions. I mean, dude, wishing death on anyone is crazy, but Trump is not anyone. Like, you're talking about a former leader of the United States of America. Why the f*** do you think they need to have security detail at all times? Like, what do you mean? It's because they have a lot of enemies, okay? They're very powerful people, and they kill a lot of people, and they upset a lot of people in, that con in, the, in the time frame that they're running for president and are the president. Not running for president. Like you're making it seem like this is a, like a dude working the cash register at your local grocery store or some shit. It's like, yeah, that'd be fucked up. Uh, I mean, you have a whole area full on um, rally of like Republicans that are always like pro guns and stuff. Yeah. And they're always like hyping up their guns and stuff. So I'm like, I'm just wondering, how did he miss the shot? You know, he just like nicked his ear a little bit. Uh -huh. I mean, I, off I feel awful, you know, they got hurt and whatever, you know, but. It's the first time the Simpsons have been wrong. That's all I'm saying. It's the first time the what? The Simpsons have been wrong. The Simpsons have been <laughs> wrong. That's very, very interesting. So elaborate more on your you're saying like the Republicans are always hyping up their guns and stuff. How does that relate to someone trying to kill the president or the, the former president? Shot, if he had a clear shot, lining it up. Mm -hmm. So you're saying he should have been able to get it. Yeah. And do it, you think he was a Republican? Uh, I think they confirmed that he was. Yeah. <laughs> they confirmed the... Uh... Oh, dude, that's... Dude, 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 dude. She's right. Oh, no. This is Caitlyn Bennett's worst nightmare. A person that actually knows what the f*** they're talking about. Okay? This is, like... This is my favorite type of Boo Boo Bennett videos because, like, she's always like, Ah, what do you think? Are you wishing death on the president? Right? And then... And then they'll be like, Yeah, I am. What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> and you're like, Ah... Do you know if the person is shot and the president is a Republican? It's like, yeah, no, that was confirmed. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't say it. I'm going to poop my pants. <laughs> uh, the person that was, it was like a young guy. It looked like, uh, yeah, it was like yeah. 20 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but maybe he could have hit the shot. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I don't care for politics either. Yeah. Uh, I, I think both options are terrible. My favorite is when an apolitical guy... <laughs> When an apolitical person's like, yeah, actually, I don't even care for politics, but honestly, honestly, f Trump. <laughs> oh, that's sick. People get so mad at that. They get so upset. Um, but honestly, like, it's just shock that he, like, he even got attempted to be shot at in the first yeah. place. Are you guys voting in the, in a couple months? Yeah, yes, we are. Yes, yes. Oh, yes we are. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Does this sway your vote at all? I don't know. I don't really know. I don't no. know really. I don't pay attention to politics much, so I don't even. I don't. Even I don't know. know. I don't know if it's fake news. Michelle Obama might be running. Bro, shut up. <laughs> we talked about this last night. <laughs> we talked about it last night. Would you vote for her? I don't know. I'm not sure. I have to look into it more. Yeah. We're not registered yet. Yeah, not a woman in there that's yeah. not an old oh, white she man. Is, yeah. I would love to that. That. Oh, we got a couple Kamala Harris voters. We got a couple Kamala Harris voters in the chat. Hey, hey, line them up. Line them up. What? It's too no, hot. I live here too. It's too hot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Oh, gosh, gosh. Okay, ready? Yeah. All right. We're getting people's reactions, initial feelings to what happened to President Trump on Saturday. When you saw what happened, first of all, do you know what happened? 
I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's first, that's the first step, I right? I know supposedly what happened. So, po oh, that word. I like that word you used there. So, uh, I'm probably the wrong person for you to answer about this. Oh, no, no, no. This is fine. This is fine. So, why do you use the word supposedly? Uh, you know, because I'm a realist. You know what I mean? And, you know, um, when I see real things, I feel them. When I see fake things, I feel that too. So, mm -hmm. it just seems unreal to me. Okay. In what way? It's so demoralizing to see how stupid the average citizen is. They're not stupid. They just don't give a f about what goes on in the realm of politics because they feel something that is objectively true. They don't give a f No matter who you vote for, things don't seem to change in a positive direction. And that's it. It's kind of like that classic Reddit meme of like dumb guy. And then at the peak, uh, you have like the person who's really stupid. And then on the other side, you have the brilliant guy, and both the dumb guy and the brilliant guy are actually right. They're correct on their position. You know, it's kind of like that. The bell curve, yeah, the bell curve meme that people use. Ultimately, that is the major reason as to why people are not invested in politics. Don't touch it with a 10-foot pole. It's not because they're stupid. It's because... It's not because they're stupid. It's because they're just stupid on this issue. You know what I mean? And they're stupid on this issue because they just don't think that this changes their life at all. And in some respects, they're not wrong. You know, they got bills to pay. They got a job to do. They, they got a job to do. And they also personally uh, are enjoying their time off. They're just uninformed, you know? Give me some more. Uh, now, hold on now, because we are talking about the Trump so. Wow. So don't. <laughs> I ain't gonna say my name over here. I don't want to look up. No, look no one me. knows who you are. So they, right. He's the coolest. So we leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love Donald Trump myself. Okay. We love Trump. We love Trump. However, okay. however, the shooting was a point of the world to wake up and see that. No one's untouchable from mm -hmm. getting shot at. Wow. And it's crime everywhere in the world. So when we see it at a high stage of Donald Trump getting shot at in broad open Terrible. daylight, we have to know that the devil is real busy out here in this world and we got to protect each other. And, and it actually show united, unity that's going to come between us eventually because mm -hmm. God brings unity anyway. Mm -hmm. So Donald Trump being shot was a reality check that anyone can be touched. However, and nevertheless, when he first got shot, I didn't see nothing blow off his ear. But all of a sudden, when he goes down, he dude, that's this is my this is my favorite type of person, guy who's a Trump supporter, who ties back Trump's like attempted assassination to crime, who then turns around and says, "I still think it was fake." Okay. Trump supporter who believes that Trump actually tried to get himself assassinated is the best guy. That is that is only the type of guy you can find in like a state like Florida. You know what I mean? It's so sick. It's awesome. He comes back up and then all of a sudden it's a little blood here and everywhere. To me and Arrow you on That's YouTube. Cool. It looked a little bit, a little bit nah. like, like to me. You know. That's why I said what I said. Okay. You know. Because, I mean, whenever you see or if you saw somebody get shot in real life, you somebody get hit, the blood splatters immediately. So it just looked. You don't think he's a Trump supporter? No, he said it already. He said he loves Trump. No, he definitely is a Trump supporter. <laughs> he literally said very openly that he loves Trump and he is a Trump supporter. Like, like it was a little fake to me because it would. Okay. But, you know. I hope he's okay though. If you could say anything to President Trump, what would you say? Think before you speak. Honestly would be it. That's what so knowing he got shot, you oh, would you would tell him that? Well no, anything, anything. So what why would you ask him or why would you give him advice to think before he spoke? 
I think a lot of times uh, you get to a point where you have so much power that you feel your words don't make an impact or an effect. But I think when you have such power, your words have the greatest impact. So you have to be very cautious and careful in how you choose those words, yeah. knowing that it can have lasting repercussions that you may not even be aware and just ricochet into a lot of negativity. Case in point with everything that happened at, after the election when he did lose, he said one thing. Amazing. She's amazing. See, there's brilliance in all of this. She's also absolutely correct. Like more correct than all of the CNN people being like, oh, this is a horrific moment in American history. I'm so saddened by the fact that like, I'm so saddened by the fact that, uh, you know, the, the person that we've been calling Hitler for the past eight years got shot at. It's like, it doesn't make sense. Did another thing. It kind of had a whole negative repercussions from that. So just think before you speak in regards to him being shot. Again, I don't think anyone deserves that. Yeah. I think that was very unfortunate. Don't wish that upon anyone, no matter how horrible of a human you may or may not be, no matter what your office is. But just overall as a leader, think before you speak and think of the effects it's going to have and the impact you're leaving. So I wonder, because you know, you say think before you speak. You mentioned uh, last election. We know what happened there at the uh, Capitol. Do you think the media and the Democrats who have been constantly calling him, you know, N-A-Z-I-E, I can't say these words yes. because I'll get censored, or calling him, you know, a dictator and he's committing genocide and he's taking away women's rights, do you think they have any, uh, you know, say in... You know, maybe they should also speak, should think before they speak. Could this have been something that maybe they've driven to as well, hate in this country towards him, saying these things about him? Most definitely, and I also think they are sensationalizing this. Um, I know as we were driving up here, we're actually staying in Orlando, and I was talking to one of the teenagers in the car, and I was telling them, you know. The political fragility demonstrated, the political fragility and just like overwhelming fragility demonstrated by the average Republican at any given moment is hilarious. Like we don't know all the other shit that you say all the time. It's crazy. Like the equation goes as such. I get to say Nazi shit. Okay. And if you then turn around and go, Hey man, that sounds like you're saying some Nazi shit. Then you're in the wrong for calling me out for saying Nazi shit. It's like, what are we supposed to do? Just like stand aside and then, uh, and then agree with you? That's what it is? I guess we just have to agree with you. J.D. Vance, his own vice presidential candidate, called him a fucking staff, Hitlerian politician. Campaign staff in the All right, we're going to listen to the next vice presidential uh, candidate. But I know you a lot of you her. are going to be listening to the three minute average at the top of the hour. Let's see what the I'm voters are saying to Biden dropping out of the presidential oh, race. I just have to take a breath understand what the plan is can't blame that reaction president joe biden drops his re-election campaign and though people anticipated it they were still shocked and they're wondering what will happen next mark strassman has our story he's a true patriot for stepping down it came as, as a shock to be completely honest with you i'm just sad what'd you think interesting i thought that most people thought he would push through but at the same time, I'm not surprised. Was it the right decision? I think we'll see. Ever since the debate, people we talked to have heard rumors and- What the fuck's going on? Is there like a mass organized retail theft occurring in the background? Rumblings <laughs> that the president might step aside. But when it did happen, it was one of those moments that felt both telegraphed and startling. A lot of people knew there was gonna be some big issues here for a long period of time. Should have been planned differently. I'm not happy because number one, why they wait so long? Number two is, what's the plan? For many voters, President Biden's exit and his endorsement of Vice President Kamala Harris has changed nothing about which party they'll support. One of the reasons I voted originally in 2020 for Biden and Kamala was Kamala. I have voted for Clinton, I have voted for Bush, I have voted for Obama, and guess what? The only one have said true to his word is Trump. But in crucial battleground states, swing voters have a lot to consider. It's still hard to pay rent. It's hard to, you know, buy groceries with all the inflation that's happening. And I'm looking for someone who would be able to help with those things. And I don't think Trump or Kamala Harris would be able to. I would be interested to see. Dude, I'm telling you, Kamala pops off on a totally partisan way.
against Benjamin Netanyahu, when Benjamin Netanyahu addresses Congress, it would be, at least on a messaging front, it would give much more confidence, in my opinion, to Michigan voters, okay? That's it. You don't even have to go out of your way. You don't have to call it like an apartheid state. You don't have to say that it's doing a genocide. Literally, like just from a pure partisan perspective, I'm not even kidding. Pull up Chuck Schumer before Chuck Schumer turned around and invited Benjamin Netanyahu to the fucking uh, to, to come speak to Congress. OK, that's it. On pure partisan grounds, the Democratic Party blocks Netanyahu, okay, uh, or at least a significant uh, a significant percentage of Democratic Party politicians don't attend the congressional hearing or uh, the addressing the Congress thing that he's doing. And then she just says, right now is not the time for Benjamin Netanyahu to come and, and interfere in the American dem democratic process. We know he's a big fan of Donald Trump and, uh, you know, he has he has his own elections to worry about. What the f is he doing here? Something along those lines. It's not even that outside of the scope of comprehension. I'm telling you, it is something that it is. It, it doesn't even have like it. Literally doesn't have the the legitimate like change in in policy that she needs to tap into as well. Okay, that's all she needs to do. Wouldn't that lose the Jewish vote, brother? I'm sorry. What do you mean the Jewish vote? First of all, the 18 to 35 demographic is significantly more important than the Jewish vote. What the fuck are you talking about, the Jewish vote? Yeah, dude, New York and California are going to fall to the Republican Party. Like, what are you saying? Like, th that's ridiculous. That is a ridiculous statement, the Jewish vote. Like, this is before we consider that it's not like Jews are going to be like, oh, dude, what? You said that about Israel? Well, it's over for you. The fuck? do you mean jewish americans vote like 70 percent democrat okay that's number one number two and the 30 percent are oftentimes very very hardline conservatives anyway and beyond that beyond that it's mostly in los angeles and california and new york hardline democrat uh, states to begin with and they're not a monolith and i know she's meeting with benjamin Netanyahu privately there are far bigger benefits to Michigan, your electoral chances in Michigan, and beyond that, the younger votes, the younger voters that are just like completely checked out as a consequence of this, maybe it's not the most consequential thing for them, Israel-Palestine, especially because like Israel-Palestine and Joe Biden being incredibly old was the reason why many of them were checked out of the process. <sighs> but ultimately, but ultimately, it's a major misstep if you don't say something at least somewhat critical, even on partisan lines, okay? Why is Gaza so important for Michigan? 100,000 uncommitted votes in, in Michigan. Massive, uh, massive Arab population, Arab Christians, Arab Muslims in Dearborn. But beyond that, but beyond that, like just even like black and brown voters in Michigan as well. Strong student population in Michigan. I think you're biased on the issue. Yes, because I'm a Muslim man, fundamentalist Islamist, who can't think of anything, okay? Who can't think of anything but, uh, but Gaza. I know, I'm obsessed with Gaza. I'm obsessed with talking about Gaza. Good luck. Good luck in the upcoming election, okay? We have to keep our unconditional support and, and loyalty to the apartheid state of Israel. You're right. Like, I'm not even talking about it from that framework, by the way. I'm not even talking about it from my own personal motivations here. People do not understand okay there are key states in the middle of the country that we rarely ever talk about that we usually often take for granted as hillary clinton also did in 2016 that have openly delivered higher numbers of votes uh for the uncommitted campaign that was launched in like a week than the percentage or not the margin but like the total votes that biden won those states by you keep specifically talking about your analysis on the elections and chatters keep thinking it's your personal opinions. Lamau is so annoying. I know. It's very frustrating. It's it's very, very annoying that people just go, oh, you're just biased about Gaza. I'm not saying that every American only cares about Gaza. Most Americans don't. I keep repeating and reiterating the position that Americans don't give a fuck about foreign policy in general, Okay. Americans do not care about foreign policy, which swings in either direction. That's why you can make certain decisions on foreign policy that Americans are not going to vote on. 
as evidenced by the fact that not a single American is talking about our 13 best soldiers on uh, on this election, unless it's like a Republican that's trying to be like, remember when Biden pulled out of Afghanistan and how fucked up it was, 13 of our best soldiers died? Like, no one cares about that shit, okay? They don't. So even when you do, even though when you make decisions that are actually uh, good in terms of like pulling back on some of our imperial ambitions, America still don't care. What about Vietnam though? Feels like people care after all. Yes. The caveat to what I'm saying is that Americans don't care about foreign policy until it's the only thing they care about. That's it. That's the classic. It's a cliche in American political commentary, American political history. Okay. Americans don't care about foreign policy until it's the only thing they care about. You understand me? But having said that, there are Americans who are not itching to vote right now that you can at the very least try and captivate. It's not bizarre that Americans don't care about foreign, poli uh, foreign policy. Why would they care about foreign policy? This entire system is designed for them not to care about foreign policy because American foreign policy is death and destruction globally. I've, de I've described it as such. Your ear has the capacity to hear a lot more sounds than you can actually, than you actually pay attention to. If you were to constantly think about the world spinning, or if you were to constantly think about all the noises that you would normally hear, if you were to, you know, uh, if you were to like actually pay attention to it, you go crazy. Okay. Foreign policy is kind of like that. We just tune it out deliberately. Okay. Because if you were to literally constantly think about it, you'd go insane. You'd be like, oh my God, 800 military bases, so much money being spent. I want to show people those TikToks. I've archive some of them i want to show you one of those tiktoks that i i think will help you call into question how nutty this shit is okay what the hell is this dissolve let me see if i can find it where is it oh man i can't find it it's the video of like uh the dollar signs associated with like every round of wait is it under favorites would that be the archive post it's not showing up maybe they deleted it now, why did I talk about that? Well, that's precisely the reason why I think Kamala Harris could make, at least on the messaging front, some changes to the current order of business. Do you understand? Because it cuts both ways. Americans don't give a fuck about foreign policy, which spells opportunity. Opportunity to actually make decisions in the opposite side who her running mate would be as well to kind of see the whole picture for CBS mornings. Let's bring in uh, Lemon Lies Molly Oak. So Molly, you have been hearing from people all across Metro Atlanta about this decision. What are some of these voters saying about this? Hey, Ron, I'm live in downtown Atlanta where people have no surprise, not been surprised when they ask what we're doing here and we tell them we're talking about President Joe Biden's announcement. Everyone we've talked to so far has heard where it was coming from. So along with lawmakers across the country, we're also hearing from folks right here in Atlanta. And so far, they've had some mixed reviews. Yes, very surprised. Why? Uh, because I don't think that's right. They let, they let them, they, they, I, I think they should have let them run. Yeah, that's what I think. I, I think it might have been a good decision, uh, but people don't seem to be backing Harris, which is a shame. And I don't know what's going to happen with the rules and the laws to replace him at such a short period of time. I mean, he's clearly not fit. Um, but if you're planning on winning the election, I don't see anybody else who can go up against Trump. And coming up tonight at 11, you'll hear more reaction from folks here in Atlanta as well as lawmakers on the president's announcement. Reporting live in downtown Atlanta, Molly Oak, 11 Alive News. All right. Immediately when the news broke, WHS 11 reporters were out around town and WHS 11's Alexandra Goldberg, along with photojournalist Aspen Hester, talking to people about this political stunner. But I cannot believe, I, it's like, wow. Like, who is, who's, oh, Lord. Just minutes after news broke, Biden dropping out, we headed to Shawnee Park. Tracy Browning said she was shocked when we told her. And now that Biden isn't the nominee, she said she's writing in her desired candidate. For me, that line at the bottom that says other, I will put God. <laughs> And I believe and trust God will be in control. Others weren't as shocked. But it does not surprise me that he's job having the race. Um, I know it's been a That's great.
maybe you don't have to maybe you don't have to say that you know what i mean i, I don't know what do i know like a lot of speculation too on his age and his ability and his capabilities on him actually being the president. And as Andy Bashir's name continues to float potential presidential or vice president lists, one voter said he'd like to see the Kentucky governor in Washington, but not now. I would prefer him wait till like the next time around. I, this time around kind of feels a little rushed for me, you know, because he's like a superstar. And I think if you rush it, you might mess it up. People he's not wrong. No, no question marks. He's like low key kind of right. He's like, he's kind of not wrong. It's not, it's an interesting take and he's not entirely wrong about it. Still trying to wrap their heads around a truly historic moment in America. In Shawnee Park, Alexandra Goldberg, WHAS 11. Yeah, thank you, Troy and Megan. Yeah, I agreed. We saw what happened with Stacey Abrams. Never, never compare Andy Bashar to Stacey Abrams. Come on, Stacey Abrams has never won anything except for millions of dollars from Michael Bloomberg and donations. Okay, <laughs> how are you going to compare that to Andy Bashar, two time champion in Kentucky, deep red, literally a guy who has been able to unironically captivate Trump voters, like actual Trump voters, to vote for him as governor? I spoke with a few Democrats and independents in South Jackson today. Now, they had mixed feelings about both Biden's announcement and the prospect of Kamala Harris as the potential replacement for him on the ballot. I just really hate it. That's all I got to say. I'm not really exactly happy. I mean, if it's due to health concerns, like running the country is a lot, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be stressful on anyone and if he's a little bit older. I just said if it wasn't good for his mental health, then yeah, you know, you got my support in stepping down. But at the same time, you know, you kind of just left people like, what are we gonna do? You know, you left it in a frenzy. But I just feel like they just took it out on him because he was an elderly person. And we all gonna get old one day. She's been Dude, that is, oh God, boomers, dude. I swear to God, boomers, bro. Boomers, oh my God. They're so, they are so monolithically selfish. Like it is just, oh, it makes me so mad. It makes me so mad seeing that shit. It makes me so mad hearing that shit. Okay. It's like they literally see, they see Brandon, they see Brandon and then they see themselves in him and they're like, no, I think I should still have the keys to the car. Is she wrong? Yes. Yes, she is wrong. Okay. Yes, she is wrong. <laughs> what are we what are we talking about? Our vice president this long. So I mean to me in my opinion is this new? outside of inflation, which I feel like was gonna happen regardless of whoever was the president at this, this time because of I guess the war and everything going on. I can't really say about uh Kamala because I just feel like I haven't really seen her do much. I don't really know like what decisions that she's helped make any differences she's helped make, I really, I don't know. So I can't say that she's probably a best candidate. And that last woman you heard from said, if it was up to her, her pick would have been Michelle Obama. Now I spoke with a Republican off camera as well who made his displeasure with Joe Biden clear whether he stayed in the race or not. All right, reporting live from the Capitol, I'm Bradley Davis, WAPT News. <laughs> Now, this, of course, is a story that has everybody talking tonight. Our Derek Hyde checking the political pulse here in western New York, giving a voice to local Democrats and Republicans alike as we prepare for an upcoming election like no other. Awesome. President Joe Biden just announced that he will not be seeking a second term in the office of the presidency. So I traveled all across western New York talking to you about what you think this major shakeup means for us here come November. Uh, my name is Trayson. Tyrone Woods. Jason Patrick. Ike Thompson. I am Ron from NT. It's from Buffalo, New York. From North Tonawanda. So I'm from Cambria, New York. I am right here from North Tonawanda. Biden just dropped out of the race. What are you thinking about that? Um. I think I could have saw it coming. Um, I think it was uh, it was something that was coming. I think that we all kind of seen that coming. I think it's good for him to kind of step out of there because you're getting older. Got to sit it down, you know. I think I'm really excited and waiting to see who's going to be next. I think it's better for our country. We definitely need another option. I mean, 
Biden seems like a good guy, but I think for our country, we need someone who can do more. I need somebody young. I know I know the internet talks about all of, you know, the older people, senior citizen, and this and that and the third, and the way they think, but it, it, it actually depends on us, the people, as far as who we vote on. No. No, I didn't really think I that. Really I thought he was going to keep fighting. I think he was going to keep going until he won. Well, I think he should have because it doesn't seem like he can hold his act together as far as talking and all that other stuff. So, yeah, he probably should have. I just saw a mental decline over the years and it just it didn't seem right. A lot of new ideas are going to come in and that's we need that. So I think that the old way of doing things is out the door with him. The Democratic Party has not yet announced who will be its presidential candidate come November. But President Biden did formally endorse Vice President Kamala Harris on social media, a welcome sight for some of the young women I spoke to. I feel like Trump going to win. But it would be a miracle if Kamala won. I want to see how I feel to have a female president. I feel like us females could do so much things. A new Democratic candidate will soon be on the horizon. It seems like a lot of us here in Western New York are eagerly awaiting for who will get that bid. We're a voice for Western New York, Derek Hyde, 7 News. Tell me, what did you think about the news that Biden's stepping out of the race? Um, it was surprising, but definitely... Um, it was the right, it was it was the right a, thing to yeah. do. It yeah. was the right choice and a good choice. I think yeah. that he's on his way out anyways, so... But, you know, he had one term, like be happy with that and give somebody else a shot, you know. Do you yeah. think do you think this will give the Democrats more of a chance to beat Trump? Oh yeah. I should 100%. hope so. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely will give him a better shot. <laughs> I have mixed feelings about it to be honest with you. Um, you know, on one hand, uh, you know, I think he could have stayed in the race a little bit longer. Um, but after seeing the debate and hearing what uh, other people were saying about him. I think it might be a good move uh, for what he's doing. Some fresh blood. Um, Harris pulls well against Trump, so uh, I think she has a real shot at winning. I'm nervous. I, I hear so much uh, animosity toward her, you know, around the workplace, which is more conservative. Uh, but Yeah, chap. Why are you guys not being normal about, like, normie Americans? Like, what do you mean? This is what... It's good. It's good to watch this shit. These are just, like, regular goobers like you. They are more representative of, like, the normal political opinion than you. I mean, they weren't going to vote Biden anyway, so... It's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm voting for whoever isn't Trump. And I wish I was more excited, but I'm still nervous. I think she, you know, she reminds me of like an auntie, like at the cookout or something. I don't know. Like she, she's a very like likable person, seems like. She does have like a questionable, like, you know, like, I don't know, like time as a, the attorney, like putting people in jail for like smoking marijuana and stuff like that. So it would definitely be something that I'm going to think about uh, moving forward. If it was in between Kamala He's right. That's a big old weakness for her. Harris and Donald Trump, I would vote for Trump. Me, personally, I would just, I would stay where I'm at, in the middle. I would pick uh, Kamala Harris, definitely. Um, just because it's something different. The country, you know, we still have not had a, a woman president yet. Uh, so what better opportunity now for that change to happen in this day and age? And plus, you know, representing, uh, you know, African-American. Remember chatters who were earlier yelling at me being like, um, I can't believe you said Kamala Harris's charisma is important. I can't believe, I can't believe you even brought up Kamala Harris. Oh, you wanted to shuck and jive for you. That's what one chatter said. I should have just pulled this video up so that people can understand like what normal Americans are looking at and thinking about when making these consequential decisions. Being a woman, I'm all for it. 